Hi, I'm Aaron with VFX Central and today we're going to be talking about how to achieve the effects done in the music video Eye of the Storm. I've already gone ahead and packaged all of these effects so you can check them out at vfxcentral.net. They're basically 4K animated clouds and lightning bolts that are separated so you can use them however you want. So go check those out. We'll be using Mocha Pro and Boris FX package to help us composite these effects in realistically. So let's jump into After Effects and get started. Okay, so here's the shot we're gonna be working on and I kinda wanna break down what we're gonna be doing. So what we need to do first is actually track the camera motion of this and we're gonna be rotoing all of the, these mountains out so that we can replace the sky. Um, then we need to do a roto or some type of luma mat to um, extract her so that we can put the clouds and lightning effects behind her. Then we'll go a bit further and we'll use Boris effects to composite all of our elements together and give them a little more grit and realism. So uh, let's jump into Mocha right now and do the tracking and rotoing. Okay, so we need to pick a, a place to track and I'm actually going to be tracking these mountains back here then we're going to create a roto mask that will be linked to that track so that we can cut these mountains out properly. So uh, what we want to do is create an X spline and let's just do this. You can also add even more X splines within that track just to help it get more proper um, tracking results. We're just gonna do translation scale and rotation. I'm not gonna do shear. Let's track this and see how it does. Okay, we can see that our track held really well. Now remember, we're just focusing on these far mountains way out there, and we're actually gonna do another track and a spline right here, because these are gonna move a little bit differently than the ones back there. So. This is just my technique, the way I like to do things. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to create another spline. And this time we're going to get a little more detailed. And if you hold Z, you can zoom in, make sure that things are lining up properly. Okay, now that I've drawn this spline over the back mountains, what we want to do is actually connect this spline, this blue one, to the red one that we created, the red track. So it's easy to do. All you have to do is make sure it's selected on the correct layer and you go uh, link track two and I'm going to go layer one. And now if we scrub through, we can see that that was completely tracked in, or is connected to the other track. So there's always going to have to be a little bit of cleanup. So I'm just going to do some of that right now. That is our first mask that we did. You could technically just do it on this layer. Once you have your track, um, you you could just draw the spline. I don't know why I do it this way. This is just how I like to do it. It keeps my brain straight that this is my track and this is my spline. Um, so whatever works for you. So now let's do this front hill. We can see that it tucks. It goes down right there. Let's uh, Let's draw something for that. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've rotoed and tracked uh, this part of the hill. What we're going to do is export these shapes um, back into Adobe After Effects. What we do first is let's go to the back mountain and we need to go to export shape data. And I always do the Mocha shape data for AE. And all you have to do is copy to clipboard. Let's jump back into After Effects. And what we can do here is uh, this, this is what I like to do is create a new solid. Let's just do a white solid. Make sure it's comp size. We're gonna go up to edit, paste, mocha, mask. There we got it right there. Let's go back in here and click on the other mask, this hill. Same thing, export shape data, copy to clipboard, jump back into After Effects. Make sure we're selected on this top layer and go edit, paste, mocha mask. So now we have both of our masks in there. First things first is I want to duplicate our footage and then if you go over to here you can either choose alpha or you can choose a luma mat. Let me just solo this and show you what it's doing. So obviously the alpha and, and luma are doing the same thing because it's white or invisible um, but if I inverted it it would do the opposite. So um, by putting 
the footage beneath our white solid with our masks, we can solo just this area. Now that we have this all in here, what we want to do is actually soften or um, add some motion blur onto the edges of our mask. So um, we can do this by turning on our motion blur right here. And when the camera or when this mask moves, um, it'll actually add a slight motion blur on the edges. Another thing I like to do is add some uh, mask feather. So let's just do seven is pretty good because that's gonna be in the distance and it'll be a little bit out of focus. And maybe this other one will do five. Okay, our next goal is to key our model out here so that we can put the clouds and lightning behind her. And to do that, what I've done is duplicated the footage. I just drop in key light. And we can use this sky pretty much as a blue screen. So just select the sky. And I'm gonna solo this layer temporarily. Go to combine matte so we can see what is being uh, keyed out. And all we have to do is adjust some of the parameters. So let's turn this down. And let's make sure she's as white as possible. I'm also okay removing some of these uh, mountains because we have them rotated out already. So let's just make sure she's locked in there. Okay, good. Now if we go to our final result and turn this to hard color, also turn on our screen balance because this is gonna bring back in the blue and the shadows a little bit more. We also need to uh, clean up the edges and to do that we can shrink down the edge ever so slightly like that and soften them up. Let's just do one. Let's add real smart motion blur and what real smart motion blur is it interpolates motion and adds motion blur wherever there's um, an object that's moving a lot. So I'll just toggle this on and off to show you. Let's turn our mountain roto back on and we can see now our mountains look good. Next, let's import the tracking data from Mocha so we can parent our effects to that. So go back into Mocha, make sure we're selected on the correct layer. Go to export tracking data, copy to clipboard, create a new null. Let's name this track. Always make sure you are at the beginning of your timeline because wherever you are is where it will paste. Just hit paste and we can see there's our tracking data. Now in my 4K storm effects, I have two folders. There's clouds and lightning and all you have to do is simply drag and drop it beneath whatever layer you are working on. So um, now we can see it's behind her. You can scale it up, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure that you're parenting it to your track that we have there. And if I preview this, we'll see that it holds really well to wherever our track is. It looks nice. So what I'm gonna do is layer in a couple more of these effects. Just keep parenting them to our track. So now what we can do is drop in one of these lightning effects. Let's just do it right here. And these are 4K, so you're going to have to scale them down. Let's find a good point. Let's scale this down even more. Turn this to screen mode. Make sure it's parented to the track again. And let's see how this is looking. Fantastic. Now with some color correction and the help of Boris effects, we can really composite these so they feel like they are in the shot. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to composite these clouds in a little more realistically, and we're gonna do that using Boris effects. So I wanna turn all these other layers off and just work on this cloud right here. The first thing I like to do is add a tritone effect. And let me show you what this will do. What we can do is sample some midpoints of our background footage, and we can even sample some highlights. So if we think that this is the best highlight, we can sample that. Obviously this is a little too dark, but you get it. We can just bring that up and let's sample. Um, I think this is a shadow right there. One of the advantages of using Boris effects is it has these handles that we can use. By toggling this down or up, we can make 
we can see the changes being made immediately. Rather than glancing our eye back and forth from here to there to here to there, we can work directly on the image and see how it's being affected. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a blur because these clouds are a little too sharp. So again, we're gonna go to effect and go to blur, lens shape, um, I think two, maybe we'll go to 1.0. The next thing we want to do is add some grain. We want to dirty this cloud up a little bit so it looks more photo real. When we film stuff in real life, there's always going to be some grain in the shadows and other places. So we want to reintroduce some of that grain. We can do that by going to effect, film, let's see, the match grain tool. We can use these sliders to control our grain. Um, I want to change this to RGB so there's some color in there. And we can also sample our red footage. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I'll just toggle this on and off so you can see. It's really subtle, but it makes a really big difference. It makes it feel more alive. I feel like this still isn't quite where I want it to be. So the last thing I like to do is add a levels and just eyeball where I think it should be. I feel like the highlights are still too strong compared to her dress. So what we want to do is drag this parameter down. If we feel like the clouds are too dark or too bright, we can just move our midpoint and really fine tune where we want it to be. I feel like that looks a lot better. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other layers. I think we're getting a lot closer, but there's one element missing. We need to add some flashing happening in the clouds from the lightning strike. So let's do that. First, I want to get to a frame where about I feel like the strike would happen. Um, I'm going to go right here. Then I'm going to create a new layer. Make sure it's comp size, a white solid. I'll just drag this right above our lightning layer. I'll temporarily turn this off so we can't see the visibility. I will then use a circle mask and just draw a circle mask. Let's turn this back on. Go to our feathering mode. We'll just feather it out and change this to screen mode. Then I'll take a tint and drag it on that layer. I can select part of the lightning layer to match the correct coloration. Next, I want to press the bracket button to jump our um, beginning of our frame um, where, it's, where it needs to be. Then I'll press T for the opacity and I'll make a keyframe. The next frame, I will maybe go down to 10. We'll go back up to 100. I'll press Alt and bracket and that will trim that layer so we can watch it flash like that. We can add a couple more of these in here so maybe it hits right there and then on this down point we'll maybe add another one up here so I can just duplicate that. We can simply move this mask up here. This one's a little too bright so press U to see all of our keyframes. Scale this down. like so. And even right there, it's a little too bright. So let's just preview this. That looks a lot better. Like it's affecting the clouds in different areas. Our final step is to pre-comp all of our effects together. So I'm going to select even the track because everything's linked to the track. All of these effects and do control shift C. Yes, we're going to move them all. They should still all be working good. And what we're going to do is create a uh, light wrap around her so it's, so the clouds are um, affecting her as well. And to do that, we need to click on her layer that we keyed out. There's an effect that Boris FX has called light wrap. We just simply drag and drop it in. We need to select what is our background. We need to specify what is the background that we have. We need to choose the pre-comp 16 which is the clouds. And immediately we can see that it's going to add an edge. I'll just turn this on and off so you can kind of see. It added some more color. It's basically projecting some of the background image onto her. You can do a couple of things. You can soften it up even more. 
We can use these to do that. You can choose how bright you want it or how dark you want it. And you can also choose the width of it. So how much of it is it going to spill over? You can turn this up and we'll see it's gonna go over her skin a lot more. Turn the softness up. And again, I'll just turn this on and off and we can kind of see what's happening there. Let's go to a frame where we can see some of her hair being affected a little bit more. And I'm gonna, oops. Let me just turn this on and off again. This really helps some of the edges that are being affected. If we feel like, again, this is too much, we can turn the lightness down just so it, it's not overwhelming. It just needs to be subtle. The last thing we want to do is color correction. I prefer to do color correction at the end after I've done all of my VFX because it will really um, combine everything together. What I do is I flatten everything first. I just use a couple of LUTs that I got from Impulse LUTs. I love them. I think they give a really cool poppy look. And then I just use an unsharpened mask to get back a little more detail and sharpen up some of the edges of specific points. Okay, friends, so that's it for this video tutorial. Don't forget to check out vfxcentral.net and see the lightning storm effects that I have packaged up for you guys. They're 4K resolution pre-matted, so they're easy to use. Also, head over to BorisFX.com and check out Mocha Pro. It is one of the most amazing tracking programs I've ever used. I use it literally on every project. It's incredibly powerful. It's been used on several features. Check out the other products that Boris FX have. They have incredible particle engines. They have light wrap. They have keying. They literally have everything. So go check out all of their amazing plugins. I'm just going to hold this mic like this, and I wanted to thank you guys for all of your support. And thank you for watching this tutorial. Please check out uh, Boris FX and also check out the pack that I put together. If you sign up today, you get 10% off off all of my products, so please go sign up. Look forward to our VFX crash course coming out this year where it takes you from pre-production all the way to post-production. We'll be answering a lot of questions that I've had people send me and it will really fine tune your skills as a VFX artist. So look forward to that and thank you and we will see you later.